there is only one thing that I know is true about existence. You may think that it's common, it's not so common sense that we're dealing with. Oh, hello there. Hi. I'm so glad that comes through now every time you say <laughs> that. I don't know what we did to fix it, but it's so much better. I don't know. I just existed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in to season three, episode seventeen. We're we're nearing the end of the season. Already. I know. What are we gonna come up with next? I don't know. I'm Lop. This is the lovely sky. I hope everybody is doing excellent. We see you all out there in our uh our live chat we appreciate you guys being here if you're listening to us driving down the road on the podcast look out there's a bird <laughs> uh, a lot of birds every week i've noticed For real? i mean i mean, they can kind of get around really quick so yeah i you know how cool that would be to just fly around just wherever fly, you wanted to go just like flap your arms and fly <laughs> I've tried as a kid my whole life and it just never worked i don't have the aerodynamic or, you know, the wings or the hollow bones. <laughs> yes, there's, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, listen, listen, listen. That's all, that's all semantics. But one thing you do have is common sense, right? Yeah. So, you know, here we are. All right. Well, let me ask you this. How you oh, would feel if this situation happened to you. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So Anonymous writes, while I was on an escalator, instead of just telling me my underwear label was hanging out of my jeans... A woman behind me decided to tuck the label in herself. You should never have to feel a stranger's finger in your butt crack. <laughs> okay, so my initial reaction when people touch me is to just flinch. So if somebody <laughs> did that behind me and that happened, I'm sorry, but you're going to get donkey kicked. Like, my leg is just automatically going to just kick backwards, and I'm going to get charged for assault, and it would have been her fault. Like, I'm like, it's a reaction. I'm sorry that you now are dead because you went careening down this escalator for shoving your finger up my ass. Right. And well, don't do that to me because, <laughs> I mean, at any given time, I could be farting. So... <laughs> You're entering there at your own risk. And they go to do it, and then just a big wave of just yeah. cloud fart they just, just comes let it out. out. And I've then got they it just contained anyway. in there. <laughs> I've got it contained. Oh, no. It just it just seeps out <laughs> as I walk. I don't I like get the walking farts. <laughs> I think you might need to get your prostate <laughs> checked, man. I do that for fun every other Thursday. It's fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that could also be the reason why, but, you know, uh, here we are. <laughs> uh, but, no, are you one of those people that if somebody's got food in their teeth or they've got a booger hanging out of their nose or toilet paper stuck to their are, are you one of those people that just ignore it or are you – do you tell people? No, I'm a thousand percent the person to, I will literally, if I see it like from across the goddamn fucking world, I will like little jog run all the way to them and be like, excuse me, ma'am, <laughs> sir, or whatever. I'm like, yeah, shoo, fix it, this toilet paper. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I'll just go about my business. Because yeah. I've, when I was in high school, this actually happened to me, and I have been mortified about this my whole entire life ever since then because not a single person told me this, and I've never wore skirts after this. However, when I was in high school, my mother forced me to be more girly, so she forced me to wear skirts all the time. Well, with skirts, you had to wear, like, stockings or leggings or whatever, but I've always had stockings. So I went to school. I had the skirt. I had the stocking. Got off the bus. Put all my, like, you know, my backpack and everything on, whatever. But I'm I'm a very like rough kind of person. I'm a tomboy, so I don't really I'm not I don't know how to handle dressy nice stuff. I don't I don't know what to do with it. I'm walking down the hallways and I like, hear people like snickering and like I'm walking with a friend of mine and she's just like staring at me, but she's not saying anything. And I'm just like, why is everybody laughing? Like, what's so funny? And I keep turning around and I didn't see anything. It was my English teacher who pulled me aside and said, "Pull your skirt down from behind." He, it's literally over everything and everybody can see everything. He, he felt like you could tell the embarrassment from him, but like 
I was mortified. I wanted to like just dig a hole and die. I wanted to cry the whole time. And the bitch who was supposedly my friend, she was just laughing the whole time. I was like, you didn't tell me? Like we were, we're friends. But she was also the bitch that stole my boyfriend at the time too, so. Yeah, not your friend. Not my friend, not my friend. <laughs> Definitely an enemy. She wanted me to look like a fool for, for obvious reasons. I'm the person, so. that if you have something in your teeth, I'm going to be like, hey, you got something in your teeth. And if you get it, or, or if you try to get it and you don't, I'm going to be like, no, it's still there. You have it. <laughs> I'm going to continue to tell you <laughs> until you get it. That reminds me. There's this old school movie. I think it's with Mel Brooks. But there's one scene that he's at like a homeless shelter and they're all eating like this, this soup that has like corn in it. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys is as he's eating it and the guy's like missing teeth and stuff, but he's just adorable. Like he's like this adorable little homeless person. But he's eating the soup and a piece of corn gets like is on his cheek. So Mel guy like, goes to him. He's like, hey, you got something right there. And so the guy like starts like smacking it away. But then it moves to like the chin. And he goes, no, no, no. Now it's there. And he does it again. And it goes all the way to the top of his forehead. He's like, did I get it now? And he goes, no. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> he just felt so big. He's like, fucking forget it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people you can't help. You just can't. And at that point, I'd be like, do you mind? Here. And I just grab a napkin and I'll just like pull it off of him. I'm like, there you go. I got I got you. Yeah. And I think it's also like a mother instinct, too, because I do that with Caden when I see him like doing whatever he's doing. And then I'll like see a tag sticking out with tags. They irritate me. I'll either yeah. like I'll grab it really quick and cut it off or rip it out or I'll just tuck it back in. I mean, I'll I tell somebody if it looks like they have a wedgie. I don't care. <laughs> I know. Can you pull the underwear out of your ass crack? Hey, I think Didn't mean to I look, think but your, your <laughs> pants are being eaten. <laughs> you might want to do something about that. But yeah, I don't know. I've I've never been the type that this is like, oh, I can't say it, it's too embarrassing. Why is it embarrassing? I don't know. I think you know what it is. It's secondhand embarrassment. A lot of people feel that secondhand embarrassment. I don't care. I'm. I'm. I feel like the truth and them being embarrassed is more than my embarrassment in the situation. Especially with this, if it's a stranger. I don't know you. We're never gonna see each other again. I'm gonna help you out. And you know what? That little one thing is probably gonna make that person's day for the rest of their life. They're just like, you know what? That person was really nice. And then you just. You just created a nicer person in the world is all. But don't yeah. fucking stick your finger up somebody's asshole just to yeah, tuck that's, in a goddamn I'm not, tag. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> like, I, that's, there's a time and a place for that. Time and a place. <laughs> time and a place. Mm. Uh, but it's, it's one of those... <sighs> you're you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. I know. I don't care. I, but in that, situation, you do. Just, in that situation, you just say, hey, excuse me. <laughs> your tag is sticking out for one it's a tag who cares let it stick out mm-hmm. if it's a girl and a doll let it stick out nobody cares mm-hmm. at this point honestly i just don't even care anymore i just look like what i look i've you know what it is i've given up because my kid always wears his clothes backwards and i have been trying for the past five years to make him stop doing that ever since mm-hmm. he started dressing himself even his shoes his shoes are always backwards like they're the right is on the left and left is on the right i don't understand I think he's dyslexic. It's the only thing that like makes mm-hmm. pop, like any kind of sense. But I've just given up. I'm like, all right, that's the way you want to go outside. Let's go. This whatever. <laughs> I just it's his style. Okay, let's go. Cool. Also, if anybody ever offers you a breath mint, take it. Always take it. Always take it. This is I can never I cannot stress this enough, people. Mm-hmm. If somebody just offers you a breath mint, take it. Take it. Because. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't need it, even if they're not saying it because you have bad breath, for one, you're, just, you're getting a mint. It's awesome. Yeah. Mints are great. But also, if you do have, there's a, that chance that you do have the bad breath going on. Mm-hmm. It's just going to help you. And then maybe it'll make you a little more aware of your own hygiene. hygiene? Yeah. And What's going on with your teeth? I they think busted. people, uh, people, <laughs> I think people, I'm going to be honest with you. And I was part of, when I say people, I mean me as well. But <laughs> oh, no. people have, they. I feel like they let themselves go a little bit during COVID. Yeah, because they didn't care. It you was didn't have like to whatever. go anywhere. Like mm-hmm. you're just sit, sitting at home in your pajamas. You know, you're quarantined. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything. So I just, I think... People got used to that. 
Yeah, they did. And it's so funny that you say that because I feel like there's like two types of people. There's like the people who actually did like something during quarantine. Like I, I had a friend who learned three different languages during <laughs> right, quarantine. The productive people. Like, yeah, the productive people. She learned how to be a painter. She can paint like Van Gogh style paintings. And I'm like, where did this all come from? Because she was the laziest piece of shit I ever met. And mm-hmm. for her to do all of that during quarantine, I was just like, what was the difference? Did you where say was quarantine? The... I said quarantine. You just oh. couldn't hear the cue, the qua, qua. I don't know. <laughs> Croissant. I was just thinking I had a whole different experience <laughs> during COVID. <laughs> I missed out. You know, out. My, my quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, I feel like, yeah, there were two different kinds of people. I kind of ventured in the middle of the two. I just wanted to be a slug most of the time. But at the same time, like, my brain was just constantly active. But the rest of me was a slug. Right. <laughs> well, in that sense, it, it's, like I said, people got used to it. And now I think, because even if you did have to go out to the grocery store during COVID or wherever, to the gas station, whatever you had to do, a run, run an errand, you just didn't care. You mm-hmm. would literally go out looking like you just roll out of bed and go and whatever yep. you like, whatever you looked like. And that's me now. I think people got really used to that because I'm seeing a lot more of that. Good. When I go out and about, I'm all for it. Like I yeah. say, I say we change the social norm of clothing. Mm-hmm, me too. Because I've I've been like that honestly for God knows how long. I. I was, I was the girl that went to high school in my pajama pants. I didn't care. I did not care. After that skirt incident, I was like, nope. <laughs> Whatever I'm rolling into bed with is what I'm rolling out of bed in. And I am going to school just like that because I don't care. I'm here to learn and I'm here to go home. <laughs> that was it. I did not give no fucks. And still to this day, I still give no fucks. Yeah. The, the pajama pants thing was definitely something I did in high school and college. College, I didn't. Oh, my God. I was lucky that I had clothes on if I went to a college class. What's I would, funny is, no, go ahead. I would roll out of bed and I would just, I'd roll out of bed five minutes before my class because at the dorm, <laughs> I was like right across the street. So I would roll out of, out of bed with whatever I was sleeping in, be lucky to, to get, a, I don't even know if I brush my teeth half the time before going to class. <laughs> I mean, That's I would eventually I brush my to. teeth when I got home, you know, but like there were times, man, you just get in that. You're just like, I just got to get through it. I got to mm-hmm. get through it. I got to do it. And I got to get through it. Get through and that rhythm. That, that carried over a lot because I'm all for fashion. I think, I'm, I think it's cool. I think great. Get, get that artistic side of you yeah. out, you know, but why does it all, all the fashionable stuff have to be so uncomfortable? I know. And they're like, beauty is in comfort. Why? Why? And they're trying to take gray sweatpants from men because <laughs> those are sexualized now. And if you're wearing those, you're like asking for, I don't know. You're just asking for you're it. You're just you asking just for it. it. You're just asking you for know. it. But it's like, man, I like sweatpants, man. Yeah, I can wear sweatpants it. in the middle of summer. I just, they're comfortable. They're cozy. Yeah. They, they keep bugs off of you. <laughs> they're, they're, I don't know. I just, I hate that most stylish clothing, you go to an event, you got to wear a suit and tie or a dress and I fix know. your hair all up and do all, it's like, why? We're all, like, we're all humans. Why do we, like, we all know that when we get home, we're taking these things off. For real. I, and not only that, but like, I just, again, you want me to have fun at whatever venue you're at. You want me to enjoy my life, my time while I'm there. Just let me be comfortable. And if I'm not comfortable, I'm not enjoying my time. I, I can't stand wearing makeup. And in high, in high school, in college, my thing was, I just never wore a bra. I didn't care. I hate bras. They suck. Even to this day, hey, I, I think I own it. one. <laughs> I'm glad somebody does. I like your bra. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, it's uncomfortable. I don't like, it. and I get it. Sometimes it helps because, you know, gravity and shit. But I, especially after having my kid and nursing so him. Why don't we have bras for our balls? Ball bras. You guys, you, you, they do actually now. Oh my gosh. They have these little like underwear that have like, for, like boxers for men that have this little 
pouch. There's like a pocket where you put oh, your, I'm aware. your nuts into. And there's, I heard they're so comfy. I want to get a pair. I don't got nuts, but I got, I'm going to put something in there. Maybe yeah. a couple apples. Um, but do you <laughs> think, do you think it works the same way with, with men as it does with women with like the, the sagging from gravity over the years? Maybe it probably does help. I would imagine, but like, you know, life is life and our skin just gets all stretchy and weird and gross. <laughs> I just have to go that road with it all the way. <laughs> Jesus. Because, you know, life happens. Everyone's got to realize the truth. We're all yeah, going to be old and sappy like, anyway. If, if, if a, a woman is out running around without a bra on, I'm like, bravo to you. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people are like, oh, God, put a bra on. You shouldn't do that. But I don't even care. Like, I don't care if they're hanging to your knees. Good for you. You know what I mean? That's me. 24-7. I just... Why? Like, why? I mean, the most I'll do is wear, like, a tank top, and then I'll wear something just, in, like, you know, kind of keep them nice and warm, because it is just a lot of fat on your mm -hmm. just chest. Just chest fat. Right. <laughs> so, it can, there's no blood circulating, so they get cold sometimes. But other than that, I just, it's, I let them out. Let them free. Let the puppies fly. Free the titties. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> you talked about how uh, when you're your skirt was caught in your underwear, right? Mm -hmm. And it was embarrassing for you. And obviously that's something that stuck with you for all these years. You remember that. Oh, uh, yep. yep. Is yep. there anything that you've ever said that keeps you up at night? Uh, you know, for me, it's always the U2. The U2 when a U2 is not appropriate. Like mm. when you're at a restaurant I was thinking of the band, or sorry. Something. Oh, <laughs> I was really <laughs> lost for a second there. <laughs> like, okay, so I once had gotten out of a cab once and when I was in New York, and, like, I, I don't remember where I was going. I, I think it was, like, a club or something. And the guy was just like, have a great time. I hope you have, like, we had, like, a nice conversation the whole time. He was like, have a great time. Have a great night. And I was like, yeah, you too. Oh, you're working. My bad. I hope <laughs> it doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of felt bad because I was just like, now he's always going to think of it. I was like, well, my job sucks, man. But it happens all the time. I can't help but say, oh, thanks, you too. Uh, what? It's yeah, so it's embarrassing like you're saying for in your me. Head, yeah, I'm, like, what? I'm not going to be weird today. I'm not going to be weird today. <laughs> not going to be weird Don't say it, 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 you too. Fuck. <laughs> you walk outside, somebody says, hi, and you're like, thanks, you too. No. <laughs> <laughs> you run away. <laughs> My, the worst for me, and I know a lot of people can relate to this, especially with social media. And they need like a dislike button on things too. Because for example, like Twitter, when somebody posts something that's really like sad or tragic, I don't want to like it. But at the same time, I want to acknowledge that I've read it and like I, I validate your feelings or whatever. Like, hey, I'm sorry you're going through this. And I hate liking the post because I'm always just like, cool, your dad just died. Awesome. Like that's what it feels like to me. But I'm not, I'm saying like, oh man, my condolences. I hate yeah. that. I don't. Like it's like the virtual U two for me. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't like. I don't. When somebody <laughs> gives you bad news like that, I don't like that we have to say sorry. Mm hmm. That the default is I'm sorry. You know, somebody's yeah. like, "Oh, my dog just died," or my, my whatever just died. You say I'm sorry, and what is the person supposed to say back to "I'm sorry"? I know. I just, because I've dealt, okay, getting real for a second, I've dealt with that since for, for over a decade now mm -hmm. uh, because I lost my mom. And when people hear about that, they say, oh, I'm sorry. And whoa. my only response is, oh, it's okay. I know. I know. And it's like, like, I don't care at all, but it's, it's fine. It's not okay. Like, it sucks. But yeah. at the same time. It's it's just I guess our defense mechanism because if we sit there and be like it's nice no I know I want to say like <laughs> when somebody gives me that I want to be like oh that's a bummer that yeah. sucks bro yeah because then they can be like yeah it does and then you can move on with your life without that awkward it's okay <laughs> I know I know because it's not okay. It's not okay. My usual go-to is just like, oh, man, I'm, that sucks. If you need me, man, I'm, I'm here for you if you ever yeah. need to talk I'm or something. I'm just like, oh, man, life's a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> but see, I feel like that's more of like a nonchalant, like, I don't give a fuck about what you just said. So, like, I'm just trying to move the conversation along and just get over it kind of mm -hmm. thing. 
that's what that kind of seems to me that you're yeah. just like, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, your shit's not important. Yeah, no, for <laughs> me, it's just like, I want to say, oh man, that's a bummer. Pretty much that's all I need to say. That's a bummer. Yeah. Like when I say I'm sorry, I, they get it. I know what they, I know what's happening there. I get it. But the thing people never think about is that what is the person supposed to say back to I'm sorry? And it's as that person, I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I never, to this day, it's been 14 years. And to this day, I still don't know what to say. I mean, especially like in your case with, with how she passed. I mean, like usually when people tell me like, oh man, I'm sorry that you went through this or I'm sorry. I usually say, hmm, not your fault. Just the way the cards are dealt or something and then just kind of move on. So it kind of like gives them an out as well. Right, but because they I can know understand. it's not their fault. Of course they do. But like they still sympathize. They, they, they're they sorry that something happened to you. It's not like, oh, I'm sorry I did this to you. It's more, I'm sorry that this right, is happening to you. Right, so they're not saying that... I'm sorry I did this to you. So I don't feel like you have to say it's not your fault. Well, exactly. But at the same time, like, it's just better than anything because it kind of just, it lets it go I on. I think we I need feel to change like... it. We're making changes here in the not so constant <laughs> studio. And... So, like, what would you prefer people to say to you? Like, if you tell somebody, like, oh, yeah, my mom passed, like, what would you prefer somebody to say to you? Fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't... <laughs> That's that's awful. That sucks. <laughs> that was the most stoner response I've ever heard. But in my like, life. what else is there? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just. I, I have once. I've actually just done this once, but like somebody had once, and this was when I used to drink. But um, I was at a bar with a friend, and there somebody close to them had just passed away, and I was just like, "Damn, cheers to them!" Like that was like my thing. Was just like salute them like salute mm -hmm. their life like i was celebrating their life and like they really enjoyed that they're like oh thank you for that like it kind of gave them a little bit of like a, a like a little boost of just like this uh, happiness of just somebody else is, is cherishing the moment that i had with this person mm -hmm. and i think like that felt like really cool to be that person to help that person with that so it was like awesome yeah. but other than that i don't think if i don't have anything in hand i'm like dilly dilly yay <laughs> Dilly dilly, is that a word? I don't know. I'm making it a word now. Bully. <laughs> Bully. <laughs> that reminds me. Do we need all the letters in the alphabet? Is that no. something that we need? No, we don't. I feel like we, we do don't. though, because think about it. Take out, take out the letter R, right now. Take out Q. Okay, so when you want to tell somebody to be quiet, you can use a K with the W. Be quiet. quiet. Same thing. Okay, K that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> okay, now I'm. You might be onto something. I'm with you on the taking them ones that sound the same. That's like, honestly I don't... C. Like C can be used as a hard k or a, a, a so it's S and K all yeah. together. There you go. Get rid of S. Get rid of K. Bam. Two yeah. letters gone. I agree. Like there's so many things so that, that puts we us don't down at need. what twenty four letters. <laughs> yeah. So Minus we're just Q2. streamlining. So now we're down 23. to 23. We're streamlining. I think if we can get under 20. We're doing good, guys. Yeah. I think we should aim for under 15. So if you guys this can is... let us know what letters you would take from the alphabet and why, we'd love to hear it. Honestly, this is another reason why when I type in like people's chat or when I type to people, I I I misspell things. I miss up I misspell them purposely. Most of the time. I misspell them purposely. And I use things that sound like that. And people are like, you don't know how to spell that? I'm like, no, I know how to spell it, but this is what it should be because <laughs> the other way is fucking stupid. Why am I going to spell it like that? Like, yeah. I don't understand. Like, this, you're making me do more work that I need to do. Well, it's I'm so, about efficiency. It's no wonder people say that the English <laughs> language is so hard to learn. It is. Could you like, why I do could we gotta not have imagine. An N? Like, and an after the, the in, in knife. Why is the N oh, there? You mean like, the K? Why, the K? Yeah, why is the K there if we don't need it? Like, it's the N makes the same sound with or without the fucking K. What's yeah. the point of the K? I've always wondered this, and, and I don't know that I've ever been given an actual good answer as to why it is the way it is. I don't know. It doesn't make I any sense. Know. Because there's, you, there's so much 
more that could have been accomplished in the time that they spent coming up with those letters, those extra I letters know. that we don't need. That used to get me mad when now I why, learned the Why do we have to have the, the same word for multiple meanings? Why can I we? Know. I can make up a noise right now. <laughs> Tacapa. Boom. That could mean the word bear. Oh, look, it's a big giant Tacapa. That could that could mean bear. Why do we have to have bear, bear, and bear? There, there, and there. Like, why, there's so many things. Why do we have to repeat? It makes no sense to me. I'm forever now calling bears Tacapas. Well, who's your cute Tacapa? Here's that's your what I'm saying. Tukapa. You can just make noises. <laughs> There's unlimited amounts of noises you can make. That oh can, why God. do we? There, we should never have a single repetitive word in the English language. We shouldn't, but we do. We. I feel like we just got lazy after a while. We're just like, oh man, what do we call this? Or like maybe people were trying to make the words, but they made them at the same time and like different hours. Like I use red for this. I use red for this. I don't know. That's a good question. And why? I'm going to have to Google that. Why can't we go back to grunts? Can we go back to grunting? Who made the English alphabet? Because, and why? Like, did they make it the way they did? I'd like to talk to, you know, when people ask if you could go back in time and talk to anybody, that's who it would be for me. Whoever (laughs) created the alphabet. I want to have a word with them. I want to go back and meet the person who made clothes and kick them so hard. In the face. Which brings me to my next question. Do you think violence is necessary? (laughs) (laughs) In that case, yes, it was. (laughs) What I am I am very odd when it comes to you know me. I don't like causing pain. I don't like seeing pain. I don't like pain in general. However, I also do realize that pain can also be necessary because without pain, you're not gonna understand dangers. And I get that. However, when it comes to people, violence should be literally the last thing you do as a form of defense. And that is all. That is absolutely all. If somebody is coming at you or your family in a in a threatening way where they're being violent, that is literally the only time you need to be violent. So self-defense. Self-defense. That is it. Any other time, if you are, are smart enough, You can literally articulate your argument to the point to get that person to not be angry or to cease the violence from escalating. That's how I've always felt because society would make it feel like a guy like me, they would try try to call uh, weak or scared or something like that. And, Mm -hmm. And in reality, I'm looking at it like, no, I'm just smart. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying smarter, to go to jail. I'm smart enough to articulate what I want to say, communicate with you with words like an adult. And if we disagree, we disagree. We'll come to that conclusion when we do. But mm-hmm. I, 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 there's no part of me that's ever like, oh, I got to punch this guy. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, eh. And supposedly that's like a cool masculine thing to do, to want to beat people up. And, and it's really not. It's just, I mean, like, man, it's just your testosterone. Go fucking jerk off in the bathroom before you get violent or angry. Trust me, you will thank me because you'll be like, oh, why was I so angry? <laughs> you will literally on, release at, it all. You're at like <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings and you get in an <laughs> argument with somebody. I just see it. I'm at the bar ready to fight somebody. I'm like, hang on a second. And I go, I gotta go into the bathroom real quick and rub on out. <laughs> That's going to go over just real well. Just aggressive fapping just happening in the bathroom. <laughs> just start just like, unzipping your pants as you're running off. back to the bathroom, <laughs> flipping them off. I'll fucking be back. I swear I'll fucking there, be back. Is there any other reason, though, uh, for violence? Do you think? Is I, 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 I'm with you. I think self-defense is pretty much the only reason I can think of for violence. I, yeah, uh, I can't. Because, I mean, like, even me, like, I wh- have a temper. And I've I've gotten to a point before where, like, I've, I've wanted to punch a hole in a wall or like smash something or like I just to that point. But at the same time, I've always like took a deep breath and stopped myself and said, OK, I, why? What, what, what will that accomplish? Like, where what am I going to do with it? Like, where is that going to go? Like, it just didn't make any sense to me. And then it just kind of reverberated like with other people. Like there's times where like my kid, I just want to like 
throw him. It's just like, nah! Because <laughs> 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 like, he just like can get under your skin. Kids do yeah. that. They love to get under your skin. But then it's just like, well, you know, I, you can't do that. Like, there's no mm-hmm. point. Like, what is he going to learn by me reacting in a in a negative way well, like that? that's where I was going to go with this. Say that guy I'm arguing with at the bar, right? Say I beat the tar out of him, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I win this fight. I'm, he's on the ground, unconscious. Mm-hmm. I'm untouched. Mm-hmm. And what did I accomplish? Nothing. You Literally, just, like I what said, did I accomplish? Nothing. The only thing you accomplished is allowing your testosterone to take over you and you releasing your power to your testosterone. That's it. You you let your testosterone, control. you let a hormone, you let a hormone control you people. That's what you did. did does that make you feel good? You let chemical control you? Yeah? Uh, All right. <laughs> well, the, the, the way I look at it is what what I did in that in that case is... I was having an argument with somebody who was not intellectual enough to have a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. And instead of understanding that they're making me mad Mm -hmm. because they don't get it, instead of understanding that they're, they're just, they're not going to get it and just walking away and being like, you're a lost cause almost. Mm Mm-hmm. All I'm doing is just beating somebody up because they don't understand my point. Yep. And that's messed up. Like, that is just messed up. Like, I'm so angry that you don't understand me that I'm going to beat the shit out of you until you understand me. But that's not what makes them understand. That's just going to make them avoid you from now on. Or not only that, it's going to make them so afraid to continue to ask questions and grow and learn. They're just going to get dumber. They're, exactly. They just get dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber. And a lot of people do this with kids, too, which is, like I, I understand the whole, you know, don't hit, don't spank your kids. Like I get that to an extent because mm-hmm. growing up, my grandfather, my parents like, no, they took that belt out like you. You fucked up. You fucked up and you learned. Yeah. But it was also followed always by like, do you know why this happened? Do you know why I did this? Because it, it was never like. I, I did it. They said it once and then they hit me. It was always just yeah. like, stop it. Stop it. I'm telling you, you need to stop it. You got to stop it now. Why are you not stopping? I'm going to give you five more seconds. All right. Now it's done. And like, there was multiple times for like us to like learn. And I feel like a lot of people like with my kid now, whenever he doesn't get anything, I, I sit him down and I say, okay, tell me what it is that you're not understanding. And let me see if we can work from it from there. And I kind of try to get his perspective. Mm-hmm. And I feel like growing up, our, our parents, a lot of the times, never really l- tried to listen to us. They just looked at us, oh, you're just a stupid kid. You don't know anything. Mm-hmm. Well, we see the world differently, too. Everybody does. It's nothing to do with me being a child, but it has everything to do with where my brain is developed at this moment and how I'm perceiving everything. And you're giving me this information, so what you're teaching me is what I'm going to learn. Yeah. That's it. Now, I do think that the younger generation, I give them a lot of crap. We know that. I give the mm-hmm. younger generation a lot of crap, which is just, I think that's just, that's like a rite of passage, right? Every generation yeah. before the next generation just has to give that generation a little bit of crap, like the older brother, older sister thing. Mm-hmm. But I do have hope in our younger, in the younger generation that's coming through because I think they are learning so much more, so much faster. Yes. It's so funny that you said that because like literally the other day I thought about this where it's just like, Kids nowadays, young, young kids, they are so much smarter than what we give credit for because they are looking at things. For example, the school system. Kids are looking at the school system like, why do I got to go to college after school? For what reason? What am I doing this for? Or like even religion. Why am I going to religion? Well, they're just learning to to question things. Yeah, which is awesome. And I give respect to our generation who have these kids Because we're allowing them that platform to be able to question it. Where we grow up, we weren't allowed to question it. We just had to keep our head down, shut our fucking mouths, and just deal with it. You don't question it. Go to college, Mm -hmm. have a wife and kids, have a husband and kids, and get the house with a little white picket fence and call it a day. That's life. And I'm so for all like question. And I love when my kid questions me. Like he. He is so argumentative when I try to like help, tell him to do something. He's like, why should I have to do this? And I'm like, all right, well, here's the reasoning behind it. And if you can give me a counter argument, all right, 
you win. But we're going to sit here and debate, which yeah. is also going to be either really good or really bad. When he well, gets that's older. what I was wanting to say about this next generation <laughs> is because they actually will sit there and look up facts, you know, because they have they have the access to yeah. it that we didn't necessarily have. Uh, but yeah. they're doing this as younger kids and they're actually learning how to debate. Yeah. And how at to a fact very check. early age, and how to and fact how, check somebody, yeah, get the right and information, get the right information for the most part. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying there isn't a big chunk of of false information out there. Well, just people believing the false information, exactly. Uh, which is, you know, there's a huge chunk of people that don't do uh, they don't do uh, constructive thinking. <laughs> I think is the word I'm looking for. They they don't do the research into things because, and it's laziness. I get it. It's, I'm the same way. Is. I'm like, if it's not something I'm that interested in, I'm not going to care enough to look it up and go into, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. so a lot of times you will take the word of, of what you've heard before. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. you was like, oh, I think I heard this one time. That sounds right to me. Okay, I'll go yeah, with that. Yeah, makes, like, that makes sense. But I okay. think the younger generation, I don't think they're doing that as much. I think they're actually genuinely, they're like, no, you can't do this, or you can do that, or this is what that mm -hmm. is, or, you know, because they're, and they can show them proof right there. Yeah. And so what they're, what's happening is all of that, that testosterone and estrogen and all of the, the things that make you snap. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's happening at a younger age now because mm -hmm. they're they're learning more now. They're they're getting through that that Neanderthal mentality faster yeah. than yeah. what say we did and our parents and our grandparents. They're getting through it at such a young age now that by the time they're through it, they are still young and have a lot to offer. Yeah, you know what the I mean? whole entire life. With either. actual common sense and, mm -hmm. and rational thinking. Now, I will say that this isn't, you know, every child. There are still some kids who, unfortunately, do need a little bit more of a push. I don't know if you know this one, but there was one recently that I saw. <laughs> this is a TikTok, and I died because I was just like, what in the God's fucking green earth is happening here? But it was an officer who pulled over a car, and in the car, the kid driving was like a 13-year-old kid. Obviously, no 13-year-old out there has a license. The lady in the passenger seat, who was 18, said, hi, I'm sorry, he's driving because I'm pregnant, and I heard that you can't drive while pregnant, but I have my license and he's holding it. So it's right here. And I just, it bewildered me. It just bewildered me that like, why was that a train of thought? Why did that, where, how did that all happen? Like, are y'all high? Like, Probably. what? Like, it's it, just, no, it's, I don't. It's a product of honestly, just not being raised right. Yeah. It's got to be. What else can it be? They just weren't raised to use critical thinking. And also the same thing of the whole laziness of they probably looked it up really quick and saw something or somebody told them right. and they and just they, so they didn't just believed know. it. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, yeah, you're probably right. This is why I the reason why I go down rabbit holes is because I am a fact checker of truth. I'm not checking facts because I'm trying to prove somebody wrong. I don't give a flying fuck. If that's what you believe and that's what you want to believe for the rest of your life, hey, have at it. Like, I got the truth. Like, I eventually got to the truth and now I feel better and I can move on. And I just like to know the truth about things. I don't want to just stay at the, the very top of something and be like, oh, okay, that's fine. I want to know, okay, but why is that that? Like, give me a reason to why that's that. And then I start learning more and more things. And by the end of it, I'm learning how to construct a brand new Statue of Liberty. But, you know, here we are. <laughs> like, yeah. That's just how I roll. I don't I don't know why people I don't know why you don't want to get the correct information. Like, I don't know well, why we you wouldn't about want it that. earlier. We were talking about how dense people can be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's. That is a big problem. <laughs> In the it's world. such a big problem. It really is. I blame 
I blame all the bullshit that we've been eating our whole entire lives that's just been seeping into our blood and our brains, making us all sluggish. These are GMOs and all that shit. You remember GMOs? Whatever happened to that? That was like, (laughs) for like five year span, GMOs was like the thing that was going to wipe us off this planet. (laughs) And I haven't heard the term GMOs in years. I feel like everything is that is told that we're just going to be wiped off the planet. Like, mm. oh my gosh, oxygen's going to kill yeah, us. Yeah, every few years there's a new <laughs> thing that's going to kill us. Ooga, booga, a booga, solar booga. flare is going to hit us from the sun. and <laughs> We're all going to disintegrate. Yay! Yeah, I just, <laughs> we're going to be out of water in five and years. We- <laughs> and I've seen, I saw that tweet like 15 years ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Uh, My favorite thing that I've ever saw, though, is somebody, when they were talking about global warming, they were just like, do you guys know what happens when the world gets too hot? All of the water evaporates. So it's like the water evaporates every day, dear, and it goes into the clouds and, and into the ecosystem and then comes back down as rain. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, it's it's a cycle. It's an endless cycle. Like, it's just, did you not learn science? <laughs> that's like the first thing you learn in science. I actually. know. Like, <laughs> How does rain work? How does water and precipitation work? <laughs> And the rain goes round and round and round mm-hmm. and round again. <laughs> like, and then the funniest thing that I remember somebody had actually mentioned that in the comments and something and the person was just like, well, how come rain doesn't taste salty? For the love. <laughs> like, do you not know how this works? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I don't have the answer to that. Why it doesn't taste salty. Because the water but is what like, evaporates. Not, yeah, the water is not the it. salt going up in the air. No, it's down. not. It's the salt the stays. Yeah, the salt That's stays fair. down. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I figured that out as I was saying. I don't have an answer. <laughs> but see, look, you use critical thinking and you got right, the I, you gotta eventually get there. <laughs> I may be a little slower than other people, but I'll get there. And I think that's the problem. I think people give up before they get there. Yeah, they're just like, oh, you know what, it's fine. It's just whatever. Like, I'm just going to be stupid on this one thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then one thing turns into two. And then 500 things later, you're just a giant slug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's... Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's These are the things I think about. Because I think about... And this is a weird thing, too, I think, to think about. But I think about... What kind of impact am I going to have, am I having in the world? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, am I, I think ultimately I'm probably worse for the planet than, (laughs) than good, you know? Honestly, Uh, I disagree with you and you want to know why? Because you actually empathize with animals and animals are extremely important and not just animals, but insects too. You empathize with them and they're extremely important for our ecosystem. And you understand, well, you don't, I don't know if you understand that, but you allow but them I to also survive live and in a live. house and oh. drive a car and go to businesses. And Listen, get, you're you trying know? the best that you can. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't negate the one thing over the other shit. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but. So, but I think about things like that, like what kind of impact am I going to have on the world, Mm -hmm. even just on society? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't have that self-reflection at like the end of the day where they think, oh, I should probably try to start doing this or try to start, you know, improving. That's what it is. I don't think people are trying to continuously improve. I think they hit a plateau and they stay Mm -hmm. comfortable. They get to a comfortable zone. And then they stay there, which I get. Oh. It's easy to do. Yeah. Because you're comfortable. It's where mm-hmm. you're, it's your safe place. The way that I think about it is that if you are comfortable, that means you've reached the point to move on to the next thing. And if you're uncomfortable, you're going into the right direction. It's almost like playing a video game. You know, you're about to hit a boss fight when like it starts getting crazy with like harder, like challenges like keep coming like you know what i mean like more mm-hmm. enemies start like showing up you're like ah shit and then you reach that one point where here's your comfort area where it's all clear and here's all your vials of health and that's your plateau where mm-hmm. you're like all right i'm gonna chill here with all my vials of health and just not go and now get to that boss it's like setting your goals and if you're if you're not scared if you're not throwing the fuck up 
while you're getting your goals done, you're not dreaming big enough. Well, I don't think you need to throw up, but I think I'm just saying like that, that feeling of like of nervousness, of nervousness, because then it's just like, OK, this is easy. You're not dreaming big enough. Yeah. You want that because like it's a challenge and it's it's going to mean that once you pass that, yeah, you're going to realize how much easier shit is going to be. If you're not nervous about it, you're not challenging yourself. Correct. And it's just easy. It's because like, you're not going to be about you're not going to be nervous about something that's not challenging. If it's not challenging, mm -hmm. you're not going to be nervous. It's not challenging. Mm -hmm. So, no, that's a, I believe I, I, I think that's a good statement that. I, yeah, like I said, I don't know. There's probably different levels to it. Mm -hmm. I, don't there's, know I feel should... like that's just life in general. Yeah. Like there's different levels. Like, so think about it. Like if you were starting off at the ground floor at like a corporation or whatever, and you're just like the lowly little janitor, mm -hmm. you know, you're doing your job, keeping your like, and it's easy. You're just kind of cleaning. Nobody fucks with you. You do your thing, but you want more money. You want more like things. So you start kind of like watching what everybody does and kind of go on to the next thing. There's going to be different challenges. There's going to be different things. And it's going to be uncomfortable because it's not what you're used to. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be like crazy because you just went from janitor to now maybe front desk. Right. Is it challenging? Correct. It is. However, it's not going to be like moving from janitor to fucking CEO. Like that is just like, oh, my God. But that's eventually where you want to get to. And in order to do that, you got to do all these small little steps to get to that big, crazy one. But by that time, you'll be prepared. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a kind of the, what is it? Fight or flight? Ladder. Yeah, fight or flight. Fight or flight theory. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people fly. Yeah, when the tough gets going, the going gets tough, whatever that is. How does yeah. that go? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> when the going gets tough, yeah. the tough get going. That's what I had it backwards. Maybe yeah. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, well, you talked about gaming. We were talking about gaming earlier. How, for you, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's not... It's becoming less fun. It is. And it breaks my fucking heart. I like, I, I get it. I get it. Everybody wants to be the best. Cool, 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 cool. I'm, I've, my whole entire life, I like to compete. I enjoy competing, but mm. I'm not a competitive person. And I know to most people that are just like, that doesn't make any sense. What that means to me is I compete against myself. I'm, I'm constantly trying to be better for things for me personally. I have my own little miniature goals. So when people play Mario, most people play Mario to beat the game. I play Mario to see how many times I can actually successfully jump on a tiny fucking block without falling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's my version Which of for, Mario. For Sky is one time. <laughs> exactly. It it's is extremely difficult. One time. And it, what sucks is that I also enjoy games that are like team games, like Apex or League of Legends or Valor and things like that. But people get so strung up on like, I want to win, I want to win, I want to win. I want to win too, but at the same time, this is a game. Yeah. Games were made for fun and relaxation. And now everybody has made every game a so competition. Yeah. And it's like even solo player games. Yeah. I can't even play a solo. But, oh, you did, how fast did you beat that game? Yeah. I beat it faster than you. What? I, just I'm just enjoying. Chill, man. Like, I, let me enjoy the fucking game. And then people are like, well, then just don't play the game. But that's just, that's not. That's not fair. You're like, not why should right. I? Why should exactly? You're not playing it right. Who, the, who was the one that decided to decipher how we play this game? It's a game. It's it's how you build your mind. I, mm -hmm. It just it drives me crazy that people just suck the fun out of a game. Out of everything. It's not out even just gaming. It's everything. But it is is definitely gotten worse with gaming, and it's really unfortunate because the games now are so advanced compared to what they were. Mm -hmm. There's some really incredible games. Yeah. Absolutely incredible games out there. And they're just, they're being ruined by this, this horde of leeches and, mm -hmm. and cesspool of just toxicity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you remember when we used to play Valorant together, how many yeah. times I would get just reamed just for being a chick. Oh yeah, the, the girl gaming thing, that's a whole nother monster. Like, the whole <laughs> women in games. It, but that that's part that's part of it. That's those same people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's those same people. No, you can't handle it. Then maybe you should be a gamer because this is all we talk to right. each other. You talk to each other like you are pieces of shit. You're talking to each other you... like that because you're children. You don't yeah, understand. Like... 
you're not you're not fully mentally developed yet. And then you're, you're just soft. You're just a pussy. Right. No, no I'm, I'm not just not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I don't feel like sitting here and being berated for no reason by some random stranger I'm on the internet tr- who's yeah. probably sitting there jerking off in the fucking little corner in his room. I'm Go not trying up. to <laughs> have a bad time. I'm on here to have fun. I'm not trying to get on and argue with somebody. Yeah. I'm like, trying to have fun. Let's do this together. You know, Let's, mm-hmm. we're on a team. Let's let's Play work as a as team. A team. <laughs> it's not that know. hard of a concept. I, there's there's no there's no team anymore. Everything is just me, 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 I, I, I. I'm the number one. People just want to be number one. Number one, yeah. number one, number one, number one. I want to be number 9,999999. I want to yeah. be the last motherfucker on the god. I just, look, now, I've had fun. I won't lie. I've always been a very competitive person. I still am. Uh, mm-hmm. And I I do try. But like mm-hmm. you said, I, when I and I, it's funny because I've never thought of it that way. But when I play a game, I try to beat myself Mm -hmm. i tried to do better than i did the last time each time yep and that is that is a sense of being competitive Mm -hmm. because being competitive doesn't have to be against people it can be yourself yeah and there's nothing wrong with that i think i think it's good actually yeah to be able to do that what with with me, like it's it's with when I play with a competitive like people and or like a group of people, like let's say we were like doing a tournament and we knew everybody in a tournament, like even if I didn't win, I wouldn't be that first person to be like, Oh my god, you suck, like I can't believe I lost to you. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, Yo, bro, good fucking job. Like you fucking got me, bro. Like, we gotta go again. Like, I wanna get back in and play again. And like that to me is like the challenge, especially if I meet somebody who is genuinely better than me. I want to go against you. I want to see how you play. I want to learn what you know. There, and that will yes. help me. And That's I will the key. grow. That's and the key I feel for like me. people don't realize that. Like, yeah, I came in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So the fuck what? What mm-hmm. I learned today is invaluable. And I can, is that a word? Invaluable? I don't know. Yeah. Invaluable. Yeah, it sounded weird coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I think you said it funny. I'm not. It, it's invaluable. It's a hard word. It's like gold. <laughs> I think it's the L's. I can't say yeah. L's, baby. But like, it's 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 a th- take it out of the alphabet, everybody. God, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, if I win, when I win, I kind of feel like I'm done. Mm-hmm. What else is there? I already beat everybody. I I am number one. I, I won. Itch. Yeah, and now the game is done for me. Like, now I move on to the next one. And especially if it's a game that I really enjoy, I don't want it to end. Okay, great. Like, mm-hmm. now what am I going to go for? And I feel like people don't realize it. And that's what I love about games like Apex and stuff, that it's so global and it's online that I am constantly getting challenged. I'm constantly learning and constantly growing. And like, and it helps with real life stuff, too. A lot of people, like, Back in the day, they're like, oh, video games cause this violence. No, no, no. Motherfuckers were burning witches at the stake before video games were born. Shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> yeah, what about the all games. the violence before video yeah. games? <laughs> it wasn't the games that caused violence. Games were a product because there was violence already made. And that's how a way for them to get rid of being violent in the street. They're like, here, play it. Use the game to get violent. Like, take it out in the game. But yeah, I Which digress. Is- it's just uh, I I had something I was gonna say, but I lost it a long time ago. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but because there was something you said that I was learning from from yeah. what you did. Yeah. And that's what I think I'm. I try to do the most when I'm playing a game is just learn how to do it better each mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Each time, whatever game I'm playing. If I if I do it once, and even if I succeed, I want to do it again, but I want to do it better. Mm-hmm. And I you know what's improve. funny about that? What's funny about that is that it reminds me of, like, just in general, with people saying things that are impossible. Like, everybody always, like, if somebody has a dream, and someone's like, oh, you know, you can't have, like, that's impossible. For example, the guy who said, I'm going to run a mile in four minute, four minute mile, right? Back in the day, before it happened, nobody, nobody in the world, they're like, no, you can't. There's no way. That's not, that's it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Now there's several people who have done it because that one person did it. All you need is that one person. 
And I, I feel was like one people... of those people. Did you know that? <laughs> he was. This is true. It's facts. I was there. <laughs> I filmed it. <laughs> Check it out. YouTube. Oh. <laughs> but like, I feel like, especially like, okay, flying too. Planes. They said we couldn't fly. Yet there we are. Fucking flying. They said we couldn't go to space. Yet there we are. We were in space. And I feel like a lot of people need to get out of that mindset of like, oh, no, that's impossible. Oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, no, that's not a thing that's going to happen. There are. Yeah, it's, it's I agree there. with the whole impossible thing. Like, it's clearly some anything. things aren't possible. Like, I can't snap my fingers and have a banana split sitting in front of me, you know, like. <laughs> but wouldn't some, it be cool if you could? Right. And maybe <laughs> one day there will be a technology that allows me to do that. But for now, exactly. it's not possible. But that's the key words right there. For or now. now. Mm hmm. Make it possible. Figure it out. If you're someone in like. Maybe somebody's going to listen to this podcast and be like, oh, my God, that's a brilliant fucking idea. I love banana splits. I love snapping my fingers. <laughs> Bam. This is idea. <laughs> it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> it's the best of both worlds for me. <laughs> Snap. It's like the <laughs> clap. And then I'll just, I'll just throw myself on top of the banana split because I'm nuts. <laughs> so. Especially since you don't got your little nut hammock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's. There's a there's a lot of things out there that everybody at some point thought would be impossible. I mean, I mean, us sitting here doing this podcast right now, nobody from back in the day would have ever dreamed that this what we're doing right no. now would be possible. Exactly. And I, I laugh because I think of somebody like Disney. Can you imagine Disney going like Walt, like being a kid or whatever, when he first thought of like Mickey Mouse and was just like... I'm gonna make Mickey Mouse a huge thing in the world, and people are like, "It's a, it's a rat." Yeah. You're gonna make a, a rat? What? And we're gonna have a castle? Like, can yeah. you imagine? Like, how crazy he sounded? But there's a fucking castle everywhere on this goddamn world now. The problem is, there's a fine line between genius and crazy. Yeah, genius and, and insanity. People, yeah, people go kind of back and forth. I think on those mm -hmm. on that line. I'm one of them. I'm fucking teeter tottering over that goddamn rope every single day. <laughs> I'm nowhere near the genius aspect. I'm more on the insane <laughs> aspect. But like, I I kind of skipped the genius part while I was still driving on the road, and I was like, oh, there's Geniusville, and I just kept going, you know. <laughs> And, and now like, you are to insanity, insanity town. <laughs> Wee! Yeah. But at, but I did drive by Geniusville, you know, and I I picked up a few things. I maybe stopped for gas and you know, but <laughs> for direction. Yeah. So I think if you can find that if you can find Geniusville and stay there, you're good. But I I don't think I think most people they don't. They they get to a point to where they're like this I, I was a brilliant idea, but then they push it one step too far. I know. <laughs> and then it that one step too far is what turns all of society against it. You yep. know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. Everybody. And sometimes it's not even the person who, like, creates a thing. For example, like, somebody can make something beautiful. Like, think about Oppenheimer, how he created this this nuclear the atom bomb basically just for for energy for us mm -hmm. and then we other people were like well you know what they cross the insanity line let's fucking make this a goddamn bomb yeah <laughs> like what the fuck no energy 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 <laughs> like we yeah. could have literally been off of fossil fuels god knows how long ago if you think about it yeah but everybody I think our just big keeps, problem go too is far. yeah we go too far we go, we're go too greedy. far we're greedy as yeah. humans and we want to be mm -hmm. have the best biggest thing there is balance people yeah. it's important i agree it's very important guys that is our show that's it that's it we what? have uh we have zoomed what? through this one we went right past geniusville i'm and not insanity ready to... i don't want to stop i know no. <laughs> well you know we had last week off and uh, that was my that's fault true. i was uh i was busy but i <laughs> uh i i'm glad that we're back here and I am sad that it, it went by so quick, but that just means that we get to get this out oh. to the world uh, sooner. You know, the, the faster it goes here, the, the quicker we can get it out to you all out there listening to us. <laughs> and we appreciate your support. I'm genuinely fucking, my mouth is just dropped right now. I'm genuinely shocked. Like, where the 
How did the time go? Yeah. You just hit go live. What do you mean? I know. I know. I don't, it sucks. But tune in next Boycotting. Monday, guys, for season three, episode 18, where we, we didn't get to it today, but we will talk about conspiracies next mm, week. We, yeah. have, we, have a, we have some good ones for you. And uh, it's going to be a good episode. So thank you guys for being here. Follow us on all of our social media. We appreciate all the support. Guy, thank you for being here as well. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. putting in all the hard work that you do here. And everybody out there, please. There's one thing to always remember. Be the Read room. the room. <laughs>